Okay, the last method is called factoring by grouping. And the way you can tell why, when to factor by grouping, there's, there's two ways, they, uh, two times where you're going to factor by grouping. One is where you have four terms. If you have four terms, you're either going to be doing greatest common factor, but more likely they're going to have you be doing factoring by grouping. Especially in this case, there isn't a greatest common factor. There's no letter that goes throughout, and there's no number that is a multiple of all these. Two, six, three, four. There's no number that goes into all of those, except for one, which doesn't really count. Uh, so this is going to be grouping. Usually if you see four terms, it's going to be grouping. The other case that you're going to do grouping, and you're going to have to do a little sort of trick method on it, is when you have something that looks a lot like the quadratic that we had, and it is a quadratic, but the f it's not as simple anymore. It's not just x squared, it's 6x squared. So there's something different about this that I need to take into account. Okay, so the method of grouping goes like this. Just group the first two variables and the last two variables together. Uh, uh, terms, I should say, not variables. So in this case, my first two terms are 4ab plus 2a, and my last two were uh, 6b and uh, plus 3. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the greatest common factor to factor each group. So I'm going to pretend they're two separate problems for the moment. So the greatest common factor here, well, for the numbers is 2. And for the letters, well, they have an A in common, but they don't have an B in common. So I'm only going to take the A. And now I have parentheses. And now what goes in the parentheses is this divided by that. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. Okay, A, a over A cancels, divided by B, B is left. And again, you can see if you did it right, because if I multiply these two, I get 4AB. Okay, now divide 2A by 2A. Now, 2A divided by 2A does not, it cancels, but it doesn't become zero. Remember, 2 divided by 2 is not zero, even though it cancels. When you cancel using division, it becomes 1. So, and it's positive 1, because that's positive. Positive 2A over 2A is positive 1. Okay, so I've taken care of that side. Let me do this side. Now, the first thing that, I, I, that you should do is write down the, the sign that is already currently there. So in this case, it's plus. Now, find the greatest common factor. Okay, 6B and 3. Well, they only seem to have a 3 in common. There's no letters in common, so I'm just going to write 3. If I divide 6B by 3, I get 2B. And 3 by 3, I get 1. Now, if you'll notice here, these two pieces are in common. Now, before you, I go to the next step, let me explain what we're doing in this next step. If I asked you what was 2A plus 3A, and I'm using a capital A to try to make it look different, you would say, well, just add them. It's 5A. Well, in the same way, if I asked you, Hey, what's 2 little a, which is what that is, plus 3 big A? If you follow the same pattern, you just added 2 plus 3, so I'm just going to add 2a plus 3, 2 little a plus 3, because that's what's in front here, 2a now instead of just 2, and I have 3. And then what would go over here is just A, just like here. Because I added those two, I'm going to add those two. That's what the addition is. It looks more complicated, but it's the same step the times whatever's here. Well, what's my A in this case? My A, my thing, the, my thing that's in common is 2B plus 1. So when I write this answer now, I'm going to write in one parentheses, add these two together, 2A plus 3. And in the other parentheses, the thing that's in common. And there I factored. So once again, once you get to this step, it's really simple. One of the parentheses is the things in common, and the other parentheses is what's left over when that thing is gone, 2a plus 3. Okay, so now let's use that here, but we got to use a little bit of trick method. We can't use grouping yet because there's three terms. I need four. 
So to find that fourth term, I'm going to do something somewhat similar to what I did on the last quadratic. But I'm going to use an extra step. The first thing is I'm going to multiply this number in front of the squared, 6, times the number at the end, negative 3. That gives me negative 18. Now I'm going to find what multiplies to this number that I just got and adds to the middle number. Similar to the last one, except for instead of asking what multiplies to this and adds to this, I'm asking what multiplies to the number I get when I multiply the first and last together. Okay, so it's a little more complicated. So what multiplies to negative 18 adds to 7? Again, I'll make a list. So negative 1 times 18. Well, that adds to 17. Negative 2 times 9. Well, that adds to 7. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of a trick, and I'm going to split 7 into negative 2 and 9. But i got to remember, it's not seven, just 7 by itself. It's 7x. So this is negative 2x and positive 9x because negative 2x plus 9x is 7x. So if I do that, I've split this and I keep these other terms. They're still here. I have not changed my top thing. I haven't changed it. It's still the same because if I simplify, this is still 7x. But now I have four terms and I'm going to use the method of grouping. And if you use this method, it will always it will always work. If this can be factored, this method will work. So I'm going to group the first two, group the last two. Okay, so greatest common factor. Okay, from numbers, two. From the letters, lowest power, x. Okay, this divided by, now I'm going to divide. This divided by that, 3x. This divided by that, well, it's negative, so i got to go negative 1. Okay, that's a positive, so I'm going to put plus. The greatest common factor there looks to be 3. Okay, 9x divided by 3, 3x, negative 3 divided by 3, minus 1. And lo and behold, look, those are in common. So my answer is, what's in common? 3x minus 1. And what is left when I take away what's, what, what's in common? 2x plus 3. And now, there we go. And once again, if I were to multiply this out, I would get that up there. So this is the method of factoring by grouping. So three methods today, greatest common factor, simple quadratics, and the method of grouping, which uses the greatest common factor. We'll get to some special cases in the next lesson.